Wiring Day 3. It has been raining the last couple days, so we haven't been able to get uh, in the van to do any wiring. We actually just have a break in the rain for a couple hours. Uh, it is supposed to rain again this afternoon. But the next spool of wire that we bought off Amazon has been delivered. I'll get into the van. I'll basically just string wires the distance of the columns that I'm expecting them to run to uh, either lights or switches or whatever it be. I'll cut them off there, label them to make sure we know which ones go for what then we'll be able to either wire them up inside or um, I'm not going to clear out the van so I'm not going to have much room to work in there. I'll probably just utilize our uh, little patio section. So we'll go ahead and get that done today and uh, we'll take you along for the ride. Well, it started raining outside so I'm going to have to uh, do some of the electrical work indoors. Uh, which shouldn't be a problem. I luckily had all of the wires cut to length. Uh, the plan now is to put on some uh, ring connectors. I'm gonna start working on this, stripping back the wire, and uh, uh, we'll see what we do next. I definitely don't want you to think I'm a professional, so uh, <laughs> take this all with a grain of salt. The following steps are applicable to any of the wire connectors you would be using in a 12 volt system. The options I chose are not necessarily the only options, but I felt were best for my system. I use ring connectors to connect to the fuse box, butt or step down connectors to daisy chain lengths of wire within the LED light runs, and spade connectors to connect the wires to lights and switches. The first step when adding connectors to a wire is to strip off the protective casing. In this example, I use a utility knife. You can also use wire strippers or pliers to complete this step. Be careful not to cut the casing of the individual wires underneath. If you do cut them, covering the neck with electrical tape or heat shrink would be advised, as to not cause a short in the future. The wire I'm using is a stranded 14 gauge marine grade wire. Stranded is recommended for van builds because solid wire can fatigue and break under the vibration of the road. The next step is to strip off about a quarter inch of covering to expose the wire underneath. The wire strippers I use have holes with the gauge of both stranded and solid wires. Select the option for yours and squeeze down on the tool and pull. Once you have the wire exposed, enter it into the wire connector and using a crimp tool, select the corresponding gauge and crimp down. Most connectors are color coordinated, so I select the blue for my connectors. After crimping, check the connection is solid by doing a pull test. If so, you have a wire ready for its application. Continue on with the rest of your connectors. Just a quick note, many people will run wire in their van first and add the connectors after. Due to the weather forecast, I felt checking off this step indoors would be just fine. Alright guys, so last night I loomed up um, all the wires that we need to run here across the ceiling to the other side starting to enter those into this column, uh, make sure there's enough wool in there to, to uh, be behind them. And uh, so we'll start working on that today. Got the uh, main power cords run up this tower in the loom. Uh, a couple of them come out, like this is gonna go to that side of this piece for the back fan. So we're gonna have to figure out some loom for that. Bought these little clip fasteners. Uh, they just clip on and then I'm debating if I'll drill a hole into the side of the wood there to, for that piece. Otherwise there's this little like tab, if you can see that, that I've been using to, to stick it to the ceiling. Some of them though are falling out pretty terribly. So uh, if I do keep those up there, maybe I'll put a little dab of glue just to have it kept in spot. Um, We'd still be able to unhook it if we had to. Run that across there. 
and then down this pillar. This pillar ends here, so I wasn't able to go anywhere further. Came out there and then went back into it here. That's going to be for our switches at the door, and then this is going to be for our kitchen cabinet lights, which uh, will come into the cabinet somewhere in there. I'm going to put loom around anything uh, just so there's no vibration, and then that sharp sheet metal uh, would be, you know, tearing at the, at the cords and stuff. These are wiring for a USB and two reading lamps that we're going to have in our bed. And I'm going to go ahead and get this in loom. So I find what's easiest is straightening up all your wires, giving yourself uh, you know, some space outside to be able to get to the fuse panel, and then just spreading open that uh, loom, and then just trying to use uh, your finger to uh, you know, kind of slide down the edge, and that folds the wires in uh, while you do it. that we just put in for uh, running to the lights and USB. I uh, just taped a bag on the end so I can use this to fish through and get through this column. I'm gonna try to put into, there's a hole right here, run it down through this column and then down. And then this will just be on the bed for a light here, USB and a light on the end, so. as the sun is going down. I am here trying to run the last wire um, across to the opposite side of the van. So we have a wire for both the living room and bed lights uh, that went up and across uh, this pillar here, down the side pillar, and we'll come to the switch at the door. And then from the door to connect to a three-way switch so that we have two separate switches, I have to go back across the van to where the switch will be in the bed. So I just went ahead, ran loom, taped it to all the connectors that will be at the switch. And then this loom, we are going to have to fish across the other side. Uh, so my plan is to try to keep it close in this pillar here. And then from there, we are going to uh, run it up and over this side. Last night in the dark, I started working on wiring uh, the last bit for our lights in the both living area and above the bed. Um, I ran it in this smaller loom because it's just a single wire. So I'm planning to put it in the channel that's running up above this pillar. And then this will meet the switch at the bed and then it'll go around the lights and then terminate the circuit down at our fuse box. Most of our wiring is all in this pillar here. Otherwise, everything else runs basically through this channel. Um, the ones that are hanging, they're all gonna go out to the ceiling. Um, so these are our lights. I labeled every cord. So here's light number four, and then cords. Like this is bed lights number three to number four, because we're gonna have four lights. Um, so it's basically a circuit that runs to the back side for two lights back around here, and then for these two lights. Um, and then they run down to the switch that will be at our bed. And then that runs across here to these cords, which is the second light switch. So we'll have a light switch when we get into the doorway. And then when we're going to bed at night, we'll be able to turn them off here. Um, but definitely I suggest, like here, I know the fans coming out from here, the lights, which lights they are, everyone has, if it's a bed, um, the front lights are all labeled as living lights for like living room. Just do everything you can to label. Uh, it makes your life a lot easier. Let's test our shore power plug. So 
as you can see the light inside of there. I plug this into a wall outlet, an AC outlet, and this, we will go ahead and flip this open. This just seats on there like a normal plug. All right, so that's hooked up. So we've come into the van. Here's our shore power plug. Here's our lamp, this lamp here. And there we go. We have light. So uh, that shore power plug will connect to our goal zero. Once we upgrade to the uh, Yeti 3000, we actually have a fast charger that charges at 25 amps. So it's like five times faster than the normal wall charger. Uh, so if we're ever in a campground that has electricity, we can plug it in and uh, be connected to some pretty decent power. So the thing I wanted to work on here was setting up all of our uh, electrical items uh, to our Blue Sea system. Um, so the ones that are fused would be able to have electricity go through them. I'll just take them out for now in case any electricity goes through it. We don't have to worry about any of the things being on, uh, even though you know, most of the things we can already power. Uh, but so my plan was just to go through um, I'm going to have to cut back the wire uh, so that the negative can fit and then the positive can fit. So before I go any further, I kind of want to just explain something so that I don't get comments below telling me uh, that I did this wrong. For the light switches for both the bed and the living room, uh, because I didn't want to run two separate lines that went to the light switch and then would have to go elsewhere and it would either be wasting a cord um, or I would have to somehow go back to it and it would just make my circuit longer. I decided to just put both the red and black going to the first switches, the power for both lights. Um, so I color coordinate it for red is bed and black is the living room. And so then I made labels to make sure I said that. cords hooked up. Um, kind of had one issue with ones wrapped in there so I'm probably going to redo that at some point soon. But uh, I tried to make it so everything kind of equally connects and then hopefully then I can just tape off some of these cords to make it look a little bit cleaner. Uh, that's one of the things with electrical. You want it as clean as possible. Uh, that's why I made sure to label everything. Um, you know, so some of these cords, like I said, they can easily be, I, I try to keep them in nice and nice lines so that, uh, you know, kind of terminates and looks good. So, uh, hoping to do that, uh, once we get it mounted, you know, might have to rearrange some of them, but for now it's looking good. So guys, one of the last pieces to our electrical system was a, uh, switch at the door. The one I bought previously didn't work uh, with our lights. Uh, but I called up the company that the three-way switch that's at the bed that has the dimmer, um, I called up the company that makes that and said I need a switch to pair with that. So uh, they made me a custom switch for it. So now we got lights. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And dim the lights hit that bell to be notified when we post new content. And if you have any questions for us, feel free to reach out. We'll see you on the next one. Yeah. So that's exciting. <laughs>